Welcome to section 5 of the parasites. This is our overview figure showing the parasites you need to know for step 1. In this lecture, we will be talking about one of the protozoa that infects the CNS, Nagleria phalari, which you can see right here. Our story of Nagleria phalari takes place in Niagara Falls. This is where these hooligans like to go skinny dipping. Niagara Falls is all freshwater. So remember, it drains rivers and lakes, not salt water, which you'd find in the ocean. So anyways, Niagara Falls sounds like Nagleria phalari. To sustain themselves during their naked activities, these boys like to go to that protein shake shop and eat some protein every once in a while. Protein sounds like protozoa. So when you think of these kids drinking protein shakes at Niagara Falls, remember that Nagleria phalari is a protozoa. Unfortunately for these yahoos, the water is infested by Nagleria phalari. You can see these amoebas swimming around in the water here. Interestingly, Nagleria only exists in the amoeba form. It never forms a cyst. For that reason, in our image, we only show the amoeba form which is the only form it has. Now this boy was just attacked by one of those Nigleria amoebas. You can see it's going up his nose. This represents the fact that Nigleria swims up the nose and penetrates the cribriform plate in order to reach the CNS. This image shows an axial cut through the skull revealing the foramina in the base of the skull. It is described in great detail within the neurology chapter. Right now, just look at the cribriform plate, which you can see labeled right here. This is where the fibers of the olfactory nerve, cranial nerve 1, exit the brain and reach the nose so we can smell. So Nigleria amoebas will travel through the nose while someone is swimming in fresh water and then travel through this cribriform plate and then infect the brain. Once in the brain, the patient is not going to do well. Take this poor fellow for example. The amoeba has gone up his nose, through his brain, and then has pushed out the top of his head. Now he's just walking around aimlessly. This represents the fact that Nigleria phalari will reach the CNS and cause a devastating meningoencephalitis infection. Now look at these infected fellows. They're pretty far gone. Their backs are stiff, they are vomiting, and they're walking around like zombies. This represents some of the most prominent features seen in Nigleria meningoencephalitis. So again, stiff zombies and vomiting for stiff necks and vomiting. Now these amoebas here have just used up their hosts. They left the lifeless bodies on the ground as they departed back into the water. This represents the fact that Nigleria phalari is lethal, so dead victims for death with Nigleria. Now you can see some amphibian frogs jumping on and off these dead bodies. These amphibians really can't save the humans at this point. The people are long gone. Amphibian sounds like amphotericin, as in amphotericin B. Amphotericin B is rarely effective in treating Nigleria phalari. That's why these dead people aren't responding to the amphibians. But just know that in a last ditch effort to try to save your patient, amphotericin B should be administered, but you have a low expectation of it actually helping the patient. Now that we've covered the image, let's review with a question. A 12 year old boy presents to the physician due to recent neck pain. His mother is present and states that soon after their recent family vacation, he began acting strange. Today, his temperature is 38.9 degrees Celsius or 102.1 Fahrenheit. The physician appreciates decreased range of motion of the cervical spine. A lumbar puncture is performed and reveals several amoebas. Which of the following is most likely true of the patient's condition? A. The patient was swimming in the ocean during the vacation. B. The infectious organism is caused by a trematode. C. Cysts will not be found in the cerebral spinal fluid. Or D. Early administration of amphotericin B will likely prevent death. Hopefully from the question stem, you notice that there are amoebas in the CSF. And the patient demonstrates symptoms of meningoencephalitis because he has a fever, neck pain, which is confirmed by decreased range of motion of the cervical spine, and examination of the CSF reveals several amoebas. This information is consistent with infection with Nigleria phalari. With that in mind, the correct answer is C. Cysts will not be found in the cerebral spinal fluid. Recall that Nigleria phalari only exists in the amoeba form, as shown with these amoeba creatures right here. It does not form cysts. Choice A is wrong because Nigleria phalari exists in freshwater, such as Niagara Falls, or streams and lakes. It does not live in salt water like the ocean. So because the ocean is mentioned, we don't think it's Nigleria. Choice B is incorrect because Nigleria is not a trematode. It's a protozoa. Recall that protein shack that the hooligans go to frequently during their skinny dipping adventures? Finally, choice D is wrong because amphotericin B is not likely to prevent death. It should still be administered just in case, but Nigleria is typically lethal upon reaching the CNS.